Welcome to this INSEAD Knowledge interview at the European Business Summit in Brussels, a summit this year devoted to the theme of climate change, carbon emissions reduction, making the economy greener. We're speaking with Jeroen van de Veer. Welcome. Thank you. You are the CEO of Royal Dutch Shell, one of the world's largest oil companies. What are you doing specifically to reduce your carbon footprint, your carbon emissions? We do three things. We do research. If we can find something to do with CO2, which is now unknown, say you can make building materials of it, that would be great news. Secondly, there are existing technologies that we know with how to make them commercial. That is, for instance, can you store CO2 in the ground? Yeah. Uh, we call that CCS. A lot of talk in Brussels about that today. And thirdly, there are things you can already do now because they make sense. Think about energy saving, energy conservation, not only in your operations, but how you can advise your customers as well. So that is how we approach it and we will all the time to refresh those three aspects. Are you actively looking for substitutes for fossil fuels in the area of biofuels and renewable energies? How much are you investing and what is the promise? First as a company, and we are very large investors, you better make up your mind how it can look like, say, in 40 years from now. And what we see then, we are convinced that renewables energies has grown. And even relative, they will have a larger percentage of the energy supplies. So, uh, but which renewable is not that easy? Will it be solar making electricity? Will it be wind? Will it be something we don't know today? Is it nuclear energy? Or what kind of biofuels? So we do, we set up all the time certain, we call that pots on the fire, are kind of mini businesses, and then we see how they, they develop. So we are, for instance, very active in second generation biofuels. Second generation means it does not compete with food. Uh, but I am convinced that the second generation biofuels will be different in 10 years from now. So there is continuous uh, opportunity to apply technology. At the same time, we see that there is so much additional energy demand in the world, think about China and the Far East, that to the surprise, uh, even the oil and gas and coal, so the combination of fossil fuels, will still grow in absolute terms. Maybe not in percentage, but the people will use more of it. So, and then you come into the CO2 problem, and that's why the CO solutions for carbon dioxide or greenhouse gases is so important to find uh, things that work rather than talk about it. In a recent op-ed piece, you seem to believe that public opinion is too focused on renewable energies as the cure-all, as the silver bullet against climate change. Um, you believe we should be more focused on existing solutions but just making fossil fuels cleaner, more efficient? I, I think I have mixed feelings. <clears throat> I think we are running, the, the energy demand uh, in the world is so big, uh, so we are better aware of that, and that applies for other commodities, uh, for iron ore or copper as well. Uh, that has to do because we go from six to nine billion people, and all the people who live in poverty, uh, they like to drive in a Tata or a Deuxevo or whatever you would like to say uh, as well. But that uses energy. So on the one hand, we need this very high awareness. At least there is now the awareness in the world. Uh, and that, that is the basis. Now you have to get a debate what we can do. And we see sometimes is that it's very easy to say, I would like to have a kind of huge reduction in 2020. Now then for me the point is, it is very easy to have a big quantitative figure, but it is about the quality of how you arrive there. What will have we to do? What are the first steps? What is the role of governments to do? What is the role for Shell? Or what is the role for our consumers? And if you don't specify that, nothing will happen. And then yeah, in 10 years you say, we didn't make the goals. And that would be bad news, because I think CO2 is a serious problem. In order for emission reductions to be successful, you say that regulation is needed, more regulation in order to make the markets work, which seems paradoxical. What are you asking regulators to do exactly? People always think Shell, free enterprise, free capitalism, the market will solve all of, the, all of it. That is of course nonsense. 
you have to make energy is so important and you have to make choices. It is not Shell that should say, should there be nuclear in a certain country. That is a decision of the government of that country. There is, uh, suppose that suddenly the rich countries go all in biofuels which compete with food. That would create more problems for people who have very few money to, uh, to spend. So you see that we need international coordination. And what governments can do, they can, they can work with standards, they set standards, so many kilometers per liter or miles per gallon, or they can set standards for buildings, they can apply uh, taxes, think about taxes in Europe, uh, the American could, for instance, I don't think it will happen, they could decide the same, that would impact the fuel efficiency of American cars, that would impact how people think about public transport. And so there are, there are many levers, but in the end you can see what governments can do. They can set standards, they can use a taxation and they can have research subsidies. And within that framework, huh, we as companies have to do the best, and I say a responsible job, looking after, of course, that we do commercial things, but that we respect uh, the people where we work and we respect the environment. Europe as a continent is certainly not standing still since it's recently unveiled the Emissions Trading Scheme or ETS, but that has come under criticism from some big companies such as Lafarge, a French cement maker, which is saying that the Emissions Trading Scheme and the regulation or surrounding it is too uncertain, too unclear, and therefore they as a, an industrial group cannot make any decisions because their investments are made with a 10, 20, 30 year horizon and they don't know what the rule of the game is going to be that far down the line. Would you agree with this viewpoint? The best what can happen is a part in addition to what I just said is that if companies like to invest for energy, more energy conservation or do even research on that, is that the best is that they can try to calculate if they put additional investments now to achieve that how they can make a payout. So if we price CO2, as we say, and you know that that price, you can make a reasonable expectation, you can factor that into your sums, and then you put more capital in in order to have lower energy usage later. So I do agree that we have a lot of teasing problems with the European trading system. So the best is that we can find solutions that we that companies can assume what is a reasonable price for the coming 10 years or 15 years. And you can only do that if you start to make policies and have mechanisms in place how those trading systems can work for that. So I think that uh, everybody understands the point of La Art. The art is doing it and give it, getting this confidence uh, that we take the right investment decisions now. Isn't the weakness of the European solution precisely that, that it's a European only solution, whereas the problem is worldwide. How can we address this without worldwide regulation and without uh, creating a distortion of competition between various countries and regions? To make a cap and trading system in the U.S. is probably one country, you have still different states, is a lot of easier than to do it in 27 countries in the European Union with a lot of people uh, next to our borders who like to, uh, to see us as a market. But we are where we are, and here we have to realize is that here after the business society, so people like, like myself, have to work in close cooperation with, with Brussels and the governments to get it from the ground. Because we have to realize if we don't get good trading systems off the ground, then our, energy, our industry keeps on being more CO2 incentive, we will emit more CO2, that is the largest or one of the largest economies in the world. Eh? So then we contributed to the problems. And I don't think that's in line with the Euro European values that we aspire. Jeroen van der Veer, CEO of Royal Dutch Shell, thank you very much. Thank you. Merci.